Sandy Alstrom, and I am um, a curriculum developer with Code HS. And um, I have been a computer science, elementary computer science teacher for years. I taught first through sixth grade and I loved it. I made the move here and I love this as well. We have with us uh, Lisa, Athena, and Portia all helping me out with the um, with this webinar. So let's talk a little bit about logistics here. We have a speaker, very exciting, Dr. Columbia Mishra, and she is working on something really exciting right now. And then we will hop into um, actually doing our programming. We'll be just thinking up a very simple story that will be uh, programming in Scratch Junior. Then we'll do we'll do two pages. We'll do a little wrap up and share. And if there's any more questions, there's a short survey for the teachers. And I know this is scheduled for an hour and 15 minutes. Might be a little long, especially if you've got some kindergarten classes, but however long you can um, stay on would be great. I will um after we do the wrap up and so on i will keep going and show some additional extensions that um, your students can do <laughs> that your students can do um, if you have time now on here i do have in the chat or q a probably the q a is a better place if you actually have questions for us to answer and then on the slide deck which will be shared with you the slide reference is just kind of a, um, a short synopsis of the slides and what we're doing on them, just in case you kind of get lost if you're helping the students and um, kind of need to get yourself back on track. The scratch block reference, this might be helpful today. It might be helpful later on, even probably more later on. And it has all the blocks, images, and description of what they do. All right. Oh, looks like the slide deck went out. Good. All right. So a few other things that I need to take care of before our guest speaker, um, teachers. So they will be creating a program based on their own fiction story. Now, we aren't going to take a whole lot of time on this part. If you have done storyboarding with your students, then um, and you want them to storyboard, you might want to get out the paper and pencil for them because after we have our guest speaker, we'll dive into that. But if you want to just have the students turn and talk and kind of discuss um, an idea for a story, that works as well. I'll have some ideas for them to start with too. So, and one more thing, um, students will be adding dialogue to their program. We have two ways we can do a talking bubble and we can also have them record their voices. So I know that that isn't always um, the best option, one or the other for your particular class. So think about which way or both that you want your students to, re, um, you know, to program their dialogue. So just kind of be thinking of that before we dive into that. That's not until later on. Um, and then also uh, when we get finished here, we'll be spending a few minutes getting our story um, ideas. And then we're going to dive right into Scratch Junior. So if the students, um, if you could make sure that those Scratch Junior devices are ready to go. Now, very exciting. Um, Dr. Mishra, uh, I'm going to introduce you and let you take over from here. And um, she, you've got a long title. Senior Staff Systems Architecture Engineer. So I'm gonna pass it over to you and go ahead and you may take over. Awesome. Uh, hi everyone. And uh, thank you so much, Sandy, uh, for saying out loud my very long title. <laughs> so I, uh, my name is Columbia and I was actually named after the Space Shuttle Columbia. So if you all um, have not seen the Space Shuttle Columbia, it, uh, it looked like this, like 
uh, which was a big uh, spacecraft on a big rocket that was launched into outer space. I am actually not in outer space. If you see the background, uh, it's just a zoom background, but that's kind of where it went. And it did some really cool science experiments and did a lot of uh, pathfinding research for us. And then uh, this was the crew from the uh, Columbia mission, uh, the last mission actually. And when I was uh, about your class, I think uh, some of you are, I was very inspired by this um, astronaut. Uh, you see at the center is uh, astronaut Kalpana Chawla. She was, a, <clears throat> she was from uh, this country, India, where I am originally from. And uh, being a kindergartner myself back then, I was so excited about it. And uh, I thought that I should become an astronaut. So ever since that time, <clears throat> I decided that uh, I will study uh, sciences and, um, you know, maths, physics, all kinds of STEM subjects and uh, do everything I can to become an astronaut. So I'm not an astronaut yet, just so you know, I work on building these kinds of spacecrafts. Um, so this is a very uh, exciting type of work for me personally. And uh, when I mention where I'm from, I am from here. Uh, this uh, uh, place in India called Malda, okay? And then uh, you can be from anywhere in the world, uh, from your classroom, and you can do space stuff. You can do cool things. These are my brothers, Apollo and Challenger. And this is me when I was small. Um, and yeah, and then I moved around in various, when you do cool things like this, you get to also travel around the world. And um, I got to do that as well. Um, so now I want to share with you like some things that I am working on in the space. Like why do we talk about space? So there are a lot of things you can do. For example, um, you know, there, uh, of course, you all have seen the moon, right? And as how big it gets, how small it gets, like, like long, long time ago, people didn't know what was happening, how the orbits worked. And people were like, oh, is the, is the sun moving around the, uh, <clears throat> the earth or what's going on? Then eventually, like scientists have to use various techniques and technologies and instrumentation to identify all that. And uh, now these technologies have advanced so much that many of you in the classroom might have heard of the um, Mars rover, right? That we send them uh, like this rover so, so far away on a spacecraft, launched through a rocket, following a trajectory and doing some crazy orbit transfers. And then finally uh, entering another atmosphere, deploying a parachute and then, you know, making it to the surface of another planet. So my company, for example, built the robotic arm on this rover. So those are the types of things that I would be working on. Like what are the specific, uh, like how do you uh, implement something like that? How do you make it happen? Uh, I don't know if you heard about the James Webb telescope, but this telescope can see to back to the origin of the universe. Like how long ago was, the universe formed, like how did all the stars come about? Like, so literally we made a telescope uh, from this planet Earth, uh, NASA led the mission and they developed this telescope that was sent so far away into deep space that it can look really, really far back and capture images from the time when the universe was formed. And, uh, and my job is to actually help build uh, some of these uh, spacecraft. Specifically, I had been looking at the thermals, you know, how hot things get. Uh, like when you are, uh, when think about it, when it's like sunny outside and, you know, someone mentioned there is snow, so it's kind of cold, right? And when you, it's sunny, it feels warm. So there's like this radiation heat that helps you stay warm. But when you are in space, it's very, very cold. It's actually four Kelvin, which sometimes, in the, if you haven't heard about it, you'll learn about it in the future. It gets really, really cold and really, really hot when you're facing the sun, perhaps, or another planetary body. So all those things make it very difficult to control uh, how all the, um, if you're not melting all the equipment on the spacecraft, as an example. So there is option to also connect, like you have, we are talking on Zoom, we are using internet, uh, you have phones, you know, your 
you're watching all those videos, I know for a fact, on your little uh, machines. So all those things uh, require connectivity. And when you go or have all these satellites up orbiting the Earth, you are actually capturing, uh, not, not only just getting like, you know, uh, images of this deep space, et cetera, but you are enabling technology that will allow for your cell phones to connect, uh, other communication uh, like protocols to happen. So all those uh, are parts of the reason why we have been going to space for a while now. And also there are like images of different, uh, you know, like, oh, something happened. There is a, let's say, <clears throat> Uh, there is some uh, climate change, right? Like we, the earth is getting, there's global warming and things are, you know, slowly heating up than they used to be many, many decades ago or centuries ago. And what we are doing is capturing those, uh, like how is the world changing? Like think about it just as changing. And when you are outside in the space, you can look in and see uh, how everything has, uh, you know, evolved over time. So here's an image. So 1917, it looked very cold and snowy. And in 2005, around the same month of the year, it's looking different. So we can do all those things if we send spacecrafts into space. And, uh, you know, a lot of cool things nowadays people are trying to do. But how do you, like, if you break a spacecraft, for example, how do you fix it? So it's very hard to fix it. So we are using coding and autonomous things. Like uh, you can fix the idea is like a spacecraft will be there and it will fix itself or like assemble something on space. So that's like a mission that I'm working on, for example. And uh, how do you command something that's in space and how do you do it from here? You need code. You need to like have a bunch of integration of different systems and uh, make that work. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of different uh, missions and things uh, that have been going on around the space uh, arena, but like, for example, here, there's like a satellite, how will I model this, like the spacecraft is being launched into the orbit, now it made it to the correct orbit, first of all, there's a lot of things that goes on to making it happen, but then once you are there, uh, you might have like heat and cold and different cycles, or if you go to the moon, moon has a different type of shape. So you, these are like mathematical problems. So you have like a different geometric shape around the moon. Sometimes you're like 80 kilometers close to it. Sometimes you are like 30, 40,000 kilometers away from the surface of the moon. So you can like be on the same orbit and then you can see like it's like super close if you're on this orbit and then you go very far. So it's very, very interesting. And, you know, you have to design for all these scenarios. And uh, that, that's what I like to do. And I hope, uh, you know, if you are interested in space, uh, you can uh, do contribute a lot of ways, uh, including like through um, not only mechanical design, like rocket propulsion design, et cetera, but also like through coding, because there's a lot of uh, autonomous things that happen. For example, the Mars rover I mentioned, how do you control it from here? How do you assemble in space? How do you process the data? So yeah, there are lots of things going on in space that requires uh, coding and uh, you know implementation of science and physics and math problems. But I wanna leave it at that for now because I don't wanna uh, tell you all about everything I'm doing. <laughs> uh, instead, I want to uh, hear some questions from you and uh, uh, go from there. <clears throat> Thank you so much. That is amazing. And there's your Q&A. Uh, awesome. So if you have some questions for Dr. Mishra, go ahead and, oh, I see we've got, if you, oh. If you have any questions, yeah. And while we're waiting to see if um, the teachers or students have any questions for you, I definitely have a question for you. Yeah. Um, first of all, these are young elementary students. Were you exposed to coding, actual coding, when you were their age? No. So the first time I did any kind of coding was GW Basic in uh, eighth grade or seventh grade I did not have my family uh, it was like the 90s I was growing up and I did not have a computer until I was in uh, at home until I was in 11th grade or 12th grade 
Okay. So you started um, your coding experience or journey when you were in middle seven. Yeah, seventh or eighth grade. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let me see if I can bring. I up. should say the reason these kids uh, now uh, like students are just starting sooner because they're just smarter, you know. And we have technology. I mean, these yeah. kids they have devices <clears throat> to use. It's amazing. Let me see if there's any. Uh, let's see. If there's any questions coming through. Um. So uh, another question I have is something I saw that you were becoming a pilot. Have you finished that yet? Or are you still working? Oh, I have not. I still have my student pilot license. I kind of took a pause during the pandemic and made a bunch of changes. <laughs> I was flying up until probably end of 2020. Uh, I kind of carried it through, but then 2021, I moved cities, like I was telling you, from Oregon to California. And yeah, I haven't picked it up yet. Uh, therefore, I'm still a student, uh, just like the rest of the class here. Yep. <laughs> but I, I have to finish it. Okay. I want to finish it. I'm a finisher. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Um, and you said that, do you, do you have any aspirations <clears throat> to becoming um, an actual astronaut? or I do. You you do okay I awesome. do yeah and I plan on applying in a couple of years whenever they make the next round available so uh, as I mentioned I'm from India so I don't have the uh, like you need to be a citizen to become an astronaut through the U.S. NASA program and that's the program I have been uh, following since I saw my role model back in fourth grade <laughs> so I have been on that path and yeah I hope to apply and uh, get in it's very competitive. I think only they select about nine people out of 20,000 applications, <laughs> something like that, something crazy yeah. like that. But yes, I'm still hopeful. Well, all of you students out there, <clears throat> someday you may be able to say, I saw an astronaut way back when. That's very exciting. <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions out there. Um, let's see. Is there anything else you would like to wrap up with, Dr. Mishra? Yes. Uh, the main thing that I want to say all the students uh, right now is uh, the most important thing for you is to learn and enjoy what you're learning and, you know, uh, figure out what you enjoy the most. You don't have to do something because everyone else is saying uh, that's cool or that's important, you like definitely think about what makes you happy, what are you uh, enjoying the most, uh, but there's so much to learn. Uh, even now I'm still learning, so I hope you continue to learn. It's a, it's a very wonderful time to be, you know, getting a lot of, uh, especially you have wonderful teachers and, uh, you know, you are getting these ideas. So keep an eye out, have a very open mind and uh, uh, try things. So yeah, and figure out what you enjoy the most. I think that's the biggest thing. All right, thank you so much. And thank you for your time and good luck <clears throat> with all of your future endeavors. I'm excited for you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sandy. All righty. <laughs> okay, now uh, let me, whoops. Let me share my screen again. There we go. All right, now it's time for you kids and we are going to program a story. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think up a story and a fiction story, not necessarily something that has actually happened. And a fiction story is one that you make up. And we are going to create, we're going to think up a story, but it doesn't have to be a complete um, a complicated story. Let me see if there's anything I need to, okay. Um, so, when you are thinking of your story, just have a, 
a good idea and we're going to talk about it so i'll help you out with your um, story development so first of all i want to talk about an example of a fiction story i want you to notice that we have a storyboard here and your teacher may or may not have you storyboard your story and that means drawing very simple pictures to depict the different um like pages in a book think of it as pages in a book so this one for example this story the whale is lost can't find his family and he's swimming back and forth then a scuba diver swims past on the next page and the whale asks, have you seen my family? And the scuba diver says, oh, I'm so sorry, no. The next page, the little baby whale runs into a fish and asks the fish, have you seen my family? And the fish says, yes. And so the last page in this story or this storyboard is where the baby whale finds his family thanks to that fish. So that would be an example of a story. Yours may not be that long, that complicated, that's fine. Um, in Scratch Junior, which is what we're going to be creating our program in, they have um, characters that we're going to use. And I'm gonna show you those. It also, um, Scratch Junior has backgrounds. And so when we are thinking of our story, we need to make sure that we can use the characters and the backgrounds that they offer. We don't have, um, it would take a while to create our own. So we're going to think of something like that. So let me go ahead and I'm going to show you some of, and you can just wait, you don't need to be in Scratch Junior just yet. So I want you to look at some of these characters. There are some really silly ones, lots of animals lots of people and then we have people doing different things trees and flowers outer space things buildings castles those would be fun barns igloos some miscellaneous things some balls and so on and then some um cars there's a school bus boats and so on um the backgrounds that we have available. We have some parks and some cities, and this is a library at school or at the public library. Here's a, um, a classroom, a stage, basketball. We have quite a few that are outside. Here are some that are in the forest in different seasons. This is winter, that's what it feels like here. And then we have a beach in nighttime and then some in out in space. So, When you're planning your story, once again, the teach, your teacher will tell you if they want you to storyboard or if you just um, turn and talk to your neighbor and just talk about a story idea. And what I'm gonna do here is give you about three minutes to just kind of develop your idea. And you can pick from these if you have, um, if you want some help coming up with an original, you know, with an idea maybe playing on the beach and then go swimming in the ocean. Maybe you can go from the classroom, from school or the library to a basketball court, or maybe you wanna fly around in space and meet these crazy characters. You can also, you know, if you don't like these ideas or you have your own idea, absolutely come up with your own idea. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to either storyboard if your teacher wants you to, or to just turn and talk and just come up with a basic idea. You don't have to plan everything out. Okay, so I'm gonna start the timer. So go ahead and start thinking about your idea.
It will take just about another minute. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Whoa, <laughs> didn't mean to have that sound go up. <laughs> All right, so next, um, let's go ahead and begin our actual program. I wanna talk about some of the slides we'll have this girl on the corner and some of them will have this puppy and this is puppy carol and if you see this picture the the picture of the girl that means that i'm going to demonstrate or talk about something and if you see the puppy that means that it's going to be your turn to do something okay all right so here's puppy carol <laughs> and please everybody go ahead and get scratch junior open and what you're going to do is click on this house right here. So everybody open up Scratch Junior if you haven't. I'll give you just a little bit of time in case um, you need to go get those devices. And um, click on the house. Once you click on that, just hang on for a minute and we'll catch up with you. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to click on this button right here. Now, let me show you my screen. Um, you can see that I have a lot of programs. I've been having a lot of fun in Scratch Junior, and you might not have anything else, and that's totally fine, but you should have the blank piece of paper with the plus sign. Go ahead and click on that plus sign, and that is going to start your first program in this class. Now you might see a different character. I have this little, I'm not even sure what it is, but he's a cute little thing. You might see a kitty cat and that's totally fine. We are going to actually delete this character because we wanna create our own characters that fit with our story. So the way to do that, if you wanna get rid of a character now or later, anytime, you're going to either click or hold, tap your finger and hold until it starts wiggling. There it goes. You get a red X, click on that red X. So remember, tap or hold until it starts wiggling and then click on the X. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is you're going to decide on the characters. Remember, um, you have sort of an idea of your story and we have characters to use. Even if you don't find the exact character that you want, use whatever's the closest, or you know, maybe if it's a crazy character in your story, that's fine. So to do that, and I'm gonna show you the different parts of this screen as we go through them and as we need them, okay? So here is where we're going to add a character. So you're gonna put your mouse over here and click on that plus sign. It's going to bring and go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and do that with me. Um, it's going to bring you into your character list. Yours might look slightly different than mine, but it should be pretty close or exactly the same. So you're going to scroll through, find the character that you want. I'm going to start with a frog. I love this frog. And I'm going to click on it and then click the check mark. Okay. So click on whatever character you want and click the check mark. And there is your character. I'm going to give you about two minutes. Go ahead and go through 
and find a character that you like. So maybe you're clicking on the plus sign, selecting your character, clicking the check mark. And right now I'll just have you pick one character. If you've already selected your character, hang on. And um, you can be looking through the characters, even if you don't pick another one, um, just to see for maybe your second character that you're going to add in a little bit, okay? Okay, we're getting near the end. So go ahead and wrap up your selection. I think I'm going to stop this before so we don't get any noises. All right, excellent. Now we're going to pick our background. So let me show you how to pick your background. Um, you might've seen when I was showing you this, but I did it kind of quick. Um, our characters are over here. Our background selection is right here. And you can see a little picture there. I'm gonna click on that and then same thing, I'm going to go through and find the background that I want to use for this page. I'm going to pick it and click on the check mark. Okay, so once again, you're going to go to the little picture here, find the background you want to use and select it and click on the check mark. Go ahead and I'll give you about a minute because I don't think it should take you too long. Go ahead and find one. You can always change it later if you change your mind. Okay. All right, let's wrap it up. I'm gonna start with four seconds left, that's all right. Okay, so the next thing, now we've got, oops, I, there we go. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about how we're going to start our program. So what we're going to do is we're going to write code to make our characters do things, okay? And to start that off, to start our program, we're going to click on a green flag and let me show you where that is on Scratch Junior. Right up here, do you see that right there? That is going to be where we start everything running, okay? So now we're going to actually start programming our characters to do something. And I wanna talk really briefly about sequence. So um, sequence means the specific order of instructions of a program. And what I mean is that um, when we give the computer instructions, the computer's gonna read it in the order that we give it. So we need to make sure that we are telling the computer what we wanna do in the order that we want it to do it. So just know that sequence, we need to keep things in the right order. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to start our program. We, it always have to, we always have to start our um, code with what we call an event. And the events blocks, and this is what I'm going to talk about this bottom part now, these are the code blocks that we're going to use to program our program, to code our program. And so we have different colors here. And I'm going to kind of click through. I would like you to hold off and just watch for a minute. I'm going to click through. And you can see that over here, these blocks change depending on which one I've picked over here. So right now, this is your turn to do something. Click on the yellow block over here. And you'll notice that one of the blocks, one of the code blocks, is a flag, just like our flag here. So I want you to click and drag that down so it's next to whatever character you have selected, okay? So everybody right now, go ahead and pick the event block when flag clicked and put it right down here in your coding area, right next to whatever your character is. I'll give you just a moment to do that. All right, so now we're going to talk about movement because we want our characters to do something, to move around the screen or interact or whatever. So I want you to think about what you want your character to do. Remember, we're going to have another character on there, and so they'll be moving around too. But you can see that I have my frog hopping. And we have some movement blocks. We can make it move, our character move right, left, up. And what do you think this one is? Down. We also have blocks that we can have them spin right, spin left. This is my favorite. This is the hop block. So the character would hop up and come back down. I love that one. And this one will just put your character back to where they started. Okay. All right. So um, before we actually start bringing our um, blocks down, I want to talk about debugging. And that is a really strange word. If you haven't ever heard um, about bugs or debugging, when we create a program, when we are coding, um, if something isn't working quite right, that means that we have a bug in our program kind of a strange little term, but that's what we call it. And so of course, when we fix those bugs, it's called debugging, okay? And so it's really important that you know that anytime anybody writes code, they always have bugs in it. There's always gonna be some bugs and we always have to do debugging. It's just part of it, okay? Now, I talked about movement blocks, right? So movement blocks, I don't know if you remember, but they were blue. So I'm going to come here to the blue box or the blue button. And do these look familiar? So what I can do now is I just bring these down just like I did with my um, events um, code block. And so I have to think, let's see, maybe I want my frog to start way over here. I'm just going to drag him over. And then I want him to move and hop and move and hop. So I'm going to drag this down. And I want you to notice how if I let it go when it's close, it pops right in. Okay. And then maybe I want to do my, my favorite hop, move, hop. And I am going to test my program. Test often. And when I say tested, that means run it with our green flag. It worked. However, I have a bug in my program because I really wanted him over here. So I'm going to fix it by, let's see, I need to add some more here. I'm going to try it again because I made some changes. I think I like that. So what I'm going to have you do now, I'm going to give you about three minutes and I want you to go to remember your blue button here and just really experiment. Move your character around on the screen and then try some of those movement blocks and um, come up with something. Try it often by clicking on that green flag.
Hope you're doing well. Remember, test your program often by clicking on that green flag. About 30 seconds left. Remember, if you don't get everything done right now, um, not a problem. You will probably have time to go back and do some more tweaking, and you'll know this for next time too, okay? Okay, so however far you got in programming your characters to move, totally fine. Like I said, you can go back later. You will probably have some time later. Okay. So let's move on. What we're going to do now is we're going to add our second character. So we're going to have two characters in our story. And if you hadn't thought of a, of a second um, character in your original story thought, think of something that your character can interact with, talk to, play with, or something, okay? So remember how we add a character is we click on over on this side, we click on that plus sign, find the character you want to add. I'm going to pick a penguin, select it, and click on the check mark. Then you can move it around wherever you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and give you, um, I may give you two minutes, I might give you just about a minute, so. I think I'm just going to give you another half a minute um, to pick your character. I think you've already seen them, so... Okay, let's wrap that up. <clears throat> picking up your picking your second character. Now, remember, we always have to start our chunk of code with an event block. So we're going to drag another um, with our new character. We are going to go back to our yellow event blocks and find the green flag and drag that down just like you did with your first character. Go ahead and drag that down and put that there. So go ahead and do that right now. All right, whoops, wrong one. There we go. Now I want you to program that new character to do some movement. Remember that we have our blue blocks that will allow us to move. So on here, we're going to go to the blue movement blocks and then decide what you want your character to do. So maybe I want my penguin to go that way to meet up with the frog. So I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna show you a little trick here, okay? If I want him to move like five steps this way, I could go, okay, one, two, three, and keep going. But what I can also do is I can change this number down here and I can say, I want him to do the same thing 
five times. You can either type it in or pick it there. And there you go. All right, so I'm going to give you about three minutes. I may give you a little less than that. We'll see how it goes. Um, to add some movement blocks to your new character. Don't forget to test your code often by clicking on that green flag. Okay, we'll wrap up um, programming the motion or the movements for this character in about 20 seconds. And again, you can always go back and change it if you don't quite get it the way you want. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do, this is fun. We are going to give our characters dialogue. So they are going to talk to each other. And we have two ways in Scratch Junior to do that. We can use talking bubbles or we can record our voice. Now, your teacher may or may not have a preference for you to use. Your teacher may only want you to use one or the other, or you can use both. So make sure that you check with your teacher or your teacher will let you know. I'm going to go through both of the methods of adding dialogue. If your teacher does not want you to use that method, use that time to go back and really tweak some of your movement blocks or try some new things, okay? All right, so um, the first thing, let me show you how to add. I'm going to go to my frog. And let me show you how to add a talking bubble. Now, it was pink. They're color-coded. So I'm going to click on this. And this is kind of the looks block, how, how they look. But you can see the talking bubble right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that down. And I want him to say something after he moves over and does his hopping. Now, we'll automatically start off with saying hi. But you can change that by, you know how I click down there and I change that number. I can also click down here and change what my talking bubble says. So I'm going to say um, the frog wants to talk to the penguin and say, let's go swimming. There we go. I made a change. I'm going to test my code. Woo! Love it. 
So now I'm going to go to my penguin and I'm going, I'm going to finish the code because I didn't really finish it, but I'm going to go to the um, penguin and I'm going to um, have him talk to the frog. So your job is to add talking bubbles to both of your characters and have them say something to each other. Okay. Something related to your story. All right. So go ahead and I will give you just a couple minutes to do that. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my code here. All right. Now, once again, if you didn't finish, that's okay. The next thing I want to show you how to do is record your voice. And once again, your teacher may not um, prefer you to record your voice. If your teacher prefers not, then you just use this to work on either the talking bubble or some more of your movement code. Okay. So um, let's see, recording your voice and notice it's green. So let me go there and I will show you. I'm gonna start with my frog and I'm gonna record my voice saying the same thing as the talking bubble. So you're hearing and reading it, okay? So that was green and you notice it's a, a speaker. So, and we have two options here, not many blocks, but that's okay. You can either make a popping sound at some point if you want, but I wanna show you how to record your voice. The speak, or speaker, the microphone right here, I'm gonna click on that. And then there's some buttons here and the ones you need to really um, focus on, this is the start and stop button. You can stop it there too. Um, this is the play button so you can listen to see if, if you like what you uh, recorded. And then you have to remember to click on the check mark Okay, I'm going to record something here, and sometimes it's a little squirrely when I'm on Zoom, but let's see if it works. Let's go swimming. I think it did. Let me play it and see. Let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Okay, I'm going to click on the check mark, and now guess what? We made a new code block. Now, this code block only exists for the character that I created it in, okay? If I go to my penguin, I can't use the same one. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it down. I made a change. I'm going to test my code. Let's go swimming. I'm not sure how well you can hear that, but it worked. So what you're going to do is for both of your characters, you are going to go to the speaker, record, click on the red button, both to start your recording and to stop your recording. You can preview it. You can play it here. And then when you like it, click on the check mark. If you don't like it, just record it again. Okay. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. I might give you two, maybe I'll give you three minutes. Go ahead and it is your turn now.
Okay, I'm going to stop that there. But if you need more time, just pause and then continue on. All right, then, oops. The next thing we're going to do is just like in a book, a story in a book, we're going to add page two. We're going to add another page. Let me show you how to do that. Well, let me get out of here. So we looked at, whoops, sorry, straight click there. So we have our area over here where we have our characters. We have our coding area down here. Over here are our pages. Okay. So I'm going to click. You got it, the plus sign on the blank page. And notice how we have a new page there, but it's not, it doesn't have the characters from page one. It has this cute little um, character here. Baby yours is the cat again, and there's no background, but we can fix that. We know how to fix that. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, delete this character because I want my frog and penguin. You want whatever it is you're doing. So remember, you're gonna tap or hold until it wiggles and then click on the X, there we go. Now, I want you to go over to your character area and I want you to click the plus sign and I want you to find your characters again, click on it and the check mark. Do that for both of your characters. I want you to, del to delete that character and then add your other characters, okay? Okay, hey, once you have both of those characters on there, we're going to now um, put a background for page two. You will probably want a different background for page two, not necessarily, but you might want them to move to a different place, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to add the background again. We've done this before. Remember right up here, this is where we're gonna click, find the background that we want, click on it and check mark. So that is your turn right now. Go ahead and add a background to your new page on your um, program. Okay, now we're going to program our new characters on page two. Remember that we have to put an event flag or an event um, block to start off our code. I'm gonna start on my frog just because I want to. Remember our events are yellow and I want you to bring down the green flag, okay? I want you to go to the other character and you can do this right now as, as I'm talking, bring down that green flag, okay? So now you have the, your event code block on both of your characters. Go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna have you code your new characters on page two to do some kind of movement. And I want you to also give some dialogue, have them talk to each other, say something, either talking bubble, microphone, or both. And I'll give you, um, go ahead and um, I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Okay, so you have two pages with your story. It might not be everything um, you had planned, but I want you to spend whatever time your teacher has for you in class, and you can add more characters, you can add more pages, you know how to do that, and even if you've got that, try new coding blocks, see what they do, test them out. 
So even if you haven't completely finished the story that you planned, that is totally okay. Congratulations, though, you have created a program that tells a story. And now you know how to go on and do this again and use it in use these codes in different these code blocks in different ways. Now, I want you to share your story with other students. I want you to show them yours, your program, and I want you to watch theirs. So if you have any questions, let me know. And teachers, please um, fill out this survey if um, and let us know what you think, um, suggestions, um, things that you liked, things that you think would be um, that would help. So please fill out the survey for us. All right, now this is extra, these are extensions. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you some things. And then once I'm finished showing all these things, you can pause in between, or you can go ahead and just show everything and then explore, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is show you how to automatically move from page one to page two. Here it is, sorry. <laughs> okay, so to move from page one to page two, there is a code block. I'm gonna show you that right now. So I'm gonna go to page one. Make sure you start on page one so that it goes from page one to page two. Okay, so I clicked on page one and it was a red block. So I'm gonna click on red and then notice I have a new code block here and it looks like a little tiny picture of my page two. What do you know? So I'm gonna grab that and I want it to change after my penguin says, hi frog, I want it to change to page two. So I'm gonna drag and drop that there. Made a change, I'm gonna test it. And it did it, yay. So I want you to do that now. I want you to pick, and you know, it really doesn't matter which character you put that code on. You only have to do that once, okay? So pick one of your characters, go to the red coding blocks and drop that page two um, or that, oh, it says page one because I'm on page two, sorry. So, and drop that page two on there, okay? Go ahead and do that now. I'll leave this up so you can see. Now I wanna show you how you can actually make your character react when you click or tap on it. It's a different event block. No, remember that we used event blocks um, that um, started when we had the green flag clicked, right? Okay, well, we can have other event blocks. So let me show you that. I'm gonna to go to, let's see, on this penguin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it here. I'm gonna pull it away from my green flag. Get rid of that one. I'm gonna go back to the yellow. And this time I'm going to pick on tap. That means when I tap or click on the character, I'm gonna move these back. I'm gonna click on the green flag and notice that my penguin is not doing anything. Watch what happens when I tap. Let's go swimming. Then he did it. Oh, and then everything else happened that's supposed to. You can also speed up or slow down characters. This one is fun. Let me show you that one. So maybe I want um, my frog to do this, but I want him to do it really fast. Okay. So on the um, on the orange, there it is. On the orange buttons right here, this little guy, I'm going to put this person in the front of the code that I want. And if I drop down, I can either speed up or slow down or make him go the regular speed. I'm going to speed him up. Do you see how he went really fast? I can slow him down. Whoa, he's going slow. The last thing I want to show you is 
how to draw your own characters or your own background. All right, so I'm going to create a new character. And there's two ways you can do this. You can take a character that they already have and make changes to it, or you can start it totally on your own. I'm going to pick, <laughs> where is it? There it is. I'm going to pick a zebra. And instead of um, clicking on the check mark, I'm going to click on the paintbrush. And I want to make him a different color. So I'm going to pick the color that I want. I'm going to make him, hmm, let's see, yellow and black instead of white and black. Notice that the bucket is already clicked. With that, I'm going to click on him. There he is. And then I can say check mark. And now I have a yellow and black zebra in my water. <laughs> the other way you can do it is you can not even start with one of their characters. You can click right into the paintbrush. I'm going to go through this kind of quick because you can explore this on your own. This is your drawing tools. I'm going to click on my arrow. That's something that you have to remember. And I can, I'm going to pick a darker color. These are the different shapes. This is how thick the line is. This is how I can spin this sideways. I can make a copy of it. I can delete it. I'm not going to talk about the camera. That's a little bit more advanced. Or the bucket, if I have a circle. And maybe I want to fill it with this blue. There we go. You can do the same thing with the background. Click on the background. You can either pick one and edit, or you can just start on your own. So remember, there's a survey for the teachers. And if you are interested in any more um, information, we have elementary curriculum, and it's, it's um, I think it's going to be very helpful for you. And have a nice day. I think we're all done. And keep coding. Thank you so much for coming.